Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Arabella Trasca. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I have a very special video. I normally like to do videos that don't include a million products and a million steps because I find there's so many videos like that out there. I like to be realistic. I'm a real working makeup artist and I see what my clients needs and wants are and so I try to deliver by doing those things in a video. But today I wanted to step up the game a little bit and give you guys another option for contouring and highlighting. Uh, this is not a new technique. This is a technique that's been used, well, a lot. It's been around for a long time. I think a lot of drag wins used to do it, but uh, uh, Scarp Barnes, who's JLo's makeup artist, this, he's sort of famous for doing this technique and using this on JLo. He then did it on Tati, and then, which is another YouTube um, influencer who's got an amazing channel as well. And so I thought that I would show you guys a different way of doing contour and highlight underneath your foundation. Yes, underneath your foundation. So, let me stop talking because I can get so chatty and let's hop right into it guys. Let's start this. So typically what you want to do is use a cream based product to create this look. It does make it easier to move around. Uh, liquid could work well and I am going to use a little bit of liquid, but a cream product in general tends to work better for this technique of contour and highlight. So I love having my eyes done before. I've wiped anything that has fallen out. And to me, this is just the best and easiest way to do makeup. You guys do what you prefer, but I definitely, if you haven't tried this, do your eyes first, wipe everything clean, and then start your skin. I'm gonna start with a few drops of my, um, the Ultimate uh, Glow Elixir. And I'm just going to put, I'm out, I'm out of that bottle, almost out, warm it up into my skin into my palms and then just press it right into my skin. What my elixir does, um, aside from the bolt, such beautiful long-term results of hydration and plumpness and many things in the instant that you put it on it creates this sort of glow luminous healthy radiant look to the skin and makes using this technique that i'm about to show you it makes it a dream come true because my elixir allows the products to mix so easily with one another so here we go so the first thing i'm going to do and normally when i do this this technique is i start with the highlighting portion you guys this is something that again it might look a bit freakish as I do it but just be open-minded and kind of stay with me so like I said I prefer using more cream base this is the Fenty Beauty linen matchstick and I am going to use this as the highlighter again get used to the fact that this is going to look strange So I'm just putting this sort of where you'd like to highlight. For me, the general highlighting rule is bringing attention to this area, taking away attention from anywhere else. So I do like to line this part a little bit, these sort of um, folds that get created over time and expression and age. <laughs> so there's that. Where else do I put it? I open it up a little bit here. I like to contour my forehead, even though I don't have a large forehead, I do like to contour it. Put this over here. Okay, that, that. I like to lift this a little bit too. And just a little bit under here because I know my contour will sit on top. And then, um, I think I'm just gonna start with that before I go. Actually, no, I'm going to mix in a little bit of the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer. I'm in the midst of testing this concealer because I wanted to find something like the Shape Tape by Drugstore, and I've heard a lot about this one, so I'm gonna use this one because the color is going to be really good underneath this, and even though this is not a cream, I it's a liquid, I'm gonna see how it blends in. Mostly under the eye to brighten there. Hey, I'm Arabella Trask. I'm a professional makeup artist. For the contour portion, this is one of my favorites. Benefit does some good bronzing. Um, I love their Hoola. I love their Hoola Caramel. And this is their Hoola Quick Contour Stick. So instead of a powder, it's a stick. So with this, how you want to do it, I like to take back some of my forehead here a little bit through here. 
And this technique, as mentioned, is not brand new, but Scott Barnes, JLo's makeup artist, has made it more famous. You can also see this technique from him on Toddy's channel. Um, I'll link that in the information. So I want to take away back in the forehead. So wherever you want to take away, you're putting dark. I want to take away this area here so I can lift throughout there. For nose, I just want to do a very thin line. Um, nose is a tricky contour because you can make, honestly, yourself look even weirder or weird with nose contour. So I'm going to do a little bit like that. And then cheekbone. The easiest way to find your cheekbone, I find, is take the top of your ear, go all the way down, and then you can see there she is. So I will take it just sort of through where my eye ends. Um, some days I want to take away much more of my lower cheek. The thing is, when you've got some chubbiness in your face down here, as I do, you want to make sure not to lift the contour so high. You're like, oh... I have a chubbier face, so I want to lift my contour really high. What you're not realizing is when you do a really high contour, so say starting it here, you're leaving so much area down here that it might actually end up making you look chubbier in the face. So I prefer to go a little bit lower. I talked about this in a post on Instagram and people are like, what? And I do because, you see, then I can blend it out. And then this is if you want to create a very nice cut jaw. You want to take it, when you do this, don't go like this because it's not how you're talking to people. Really put the contour stick or with the brush and just like cut away. You see, it literally tucks right under the chin. Um, and then with this, I'm going to blend it downwards, okay, to show you. But cut it right under the chin. And then I'm going to fan it out and sort of blend it all in. So this is sort of the pre-blending of the, I look crazy, but this is how we start. And we're going to start the blending now. Many ways to start the blending. Always start with the lighter part, at least I prefer to. You can use a beauty blender uh, to blend out. You can use sort of those, um, I forget what these brushes I call. I call them like a cat paw it feels like it's like a cat paw this is the one that mac made you can use a small sort of foundation tip um today i'm going to start with this even a foundation brush this is a smaller foundation brush like i said and really i like having like a napkin or a towel here that i can just wipe because it's a lot of product and you're going to start blending the highlight portion you guys this is gonna look strange just go with it, but we're going to start blending out the highlight portion of this crazy technique. This is boring if I just sit here and do it while you guys watch, so I'm going to fast forward this. For you. And always before I move on to the contouring blending part, I'll take, even though I used like a thinner uh, foundation brush to blend out, I'll take a beauty blender and just kind of stipple it in because sometimes with a brush, there could be sort of little lines that might have been left behind that you may not notice. So I find that with this, it just kind of pats everything in and the texture is going to look much cleaner, much better, much more pushed into the skin when you layer it with foundation. So there's that. And now we're gonna start the contouring, the blending part of the contour. So for blending, um, I like if you want a really soft look, I do like a softer brush. I really like this brush. This is by Royal and Langnickel Omenia brush. I'm going to link it all below. And this is one of my favorite brushes, the Hourglass Foundation Brush. So let me begin with the Hourglass. So with good amount of pressure, I'll start at the forehead. And you kind of want to blend it, but not like you want to blend it well, but not to the point where um, you can't see what you've done anymore. Like you want to sort of leave it a little bit 
uh, still potent on the skin because you're remembering that you will indeed be putting foundation on top. So I'm gonna start there, blend this down, probably shouldn't be wearing earrings. Whenever I do this, I feel like if somebody was to see me, they'd be like, how is she a makeup artist? But I am, I'm a good one. <laughs> So blend that right down. If you find you've come up too high like I just did, blend it back down with the um, lighter color or the brush that you use with the lighter color. So with the cheeks, I'm going to pull my hair back for you so that you can really see how I blend out the cheeks. There we go. So um, you kind of want to go back and forth a little bit. Always take some of the product off. There's a lot of product and just, I like to blend it down a tiny bit. It's a very sort of thin line. You blend it too down, you make your face look really low. That's not good. You blend it too high, then you leave too much of this portion over here, which can make you look like you have chubbier cheeks. Um, if you don't have chubby cheeks and you wanna create that look, it's fine, but I have chubby cheeks and I love them, but I don't want to make them bigger either. I don't know why this is joining here. So there we go, that should stay light. Okay, and I'm going to blend this sort of um, in an upward motion, wow, in a upward motion and kind of down. And this, um, I'm, I'm also playing around with myself finding out how low I like to take it. Sometimes I find I like to take it really low and then some days I'm like, no, that's awful. Um, but it just depends even as a makeup artist on clients I don't really do this because I kind of know what I want to do But on myself, I'm much more experimental in the sense of I'm not um, scared to screw up on myself Because I can just correct it So blending out and then kind of feathering it outwards Onto the nose is a really nice tip and then I'm going to press in the highlighter part and even here um, although you don't want to go too up, you want to sort of fan it out, press it out, beautiful like that, to create the softness of it. And then I'll take the, so the bigger brush and just bring down the contour, and you want to bring it right down. Even when you do foundation, guys, I don't know about you, but I prefer, so just like I did with the Beauty Blender, blending out the light parts, I'm going to blend out the dark parts. I prefer... Uh, no matter what foundation I'm wearing, I always take it down my neck. It's just a, w a more professional way of making your foundation look. There's, it's almost untraceable when you put it all down your neck. And no foundation is 100% perfect. You know, guys, when I'm working with a client, if you were to ask my clients how many foundations does Arabella mix, it's always like three or four. So foundation is never perfect. And I'm mixing, I like to mix a little bit of yellow, a little bit of neutral, a little bit of this. I mix some foundations for texture, others for um, colors, others for different reasons. So, so there it is. I think that's way more than enough blending. And look, I told you guys not to do this and I overdid it. I didn't need to go that blended out because I am putting foundation on top. So I'm putting a second layer of the contour and just keeping it a little stronger because it's going to blend out more when I put the foundation. And this looks really thick here, as you can see. It's a tiny bit thick. I can just cut it down a little bit. But see, when I go a bit thicker, do you see how it takes away from all of this cheek that I have? I wanna be like, you know, my, what's that, that Fergie song? Oh, you know, I probably shouldn't try to sing on here. I mean, I do not need to give you guys a, re a reason not to come back to my channel, so I'm just not gonna sing. But you know the song, My Humps, My Humps. I wanna be like, my cheeks, my cheeks. I did it. Okay, good, blended, and now we're gonna get into the foundation portion. Let's go. When I do these sort of things, guys, I want to try to use the hardest things um, so that it, if you guys use something that's easier, it's easier for you. But if um, if you were to use something that's a little bit harder, so in this case, using a foundation that's not super watery or super um, uh, high, contact of, high content of water, 
I'm using the CC Cream Illumination by It Cosmetics. This is the color medium. It's got a little bit of a glow, which I really like. I'm gonna take two pumps. And the reason I say I'm using something harder is because this is a thicker cream, it is gonna make this application a little bit harder than if it was something a lot more liquidy. But for that reason, I wanna use the harder thing. I also really love this foundation and suggest this foundation to people. Um, so let's go from there. So this is um, the brush I'm gonna use. You wanna use something kind of, uh, it can be fluffy. This is the It Cosmetics uh, foundation brush. Um, there's no number. They used to call it a foundation brush. I don't know if they still do. Um, and it's a synthetic hair. It's kind of soft at the, very soft actually at the top. And I'm going to start by taking a lot of product on the brush, putting some of it off. I always keep a towel, of course, as I mentioned. And then what you want to start to do is create more of a stippling action. So we can start because you're gonna be covering the whole face. I start over the lightest parts, right? So if my brush gets dirty, I've already covered my lightest parts, like that. So I start kind of in the T-zone area of it. Okay. And then I take more product, and now I start kind of stippling. And the reason you're stippling at first, you're not really moving, you're not trying to necessarily, necessarily move the contour and highlight underneath. You're just trying to create like a layer of protection for it. So um, you still want the contour to come through and that's why it's important that you don't over blend the contour. And even a little bit here, I'm going to, but very little bit on the neck. You wanna keep that sharpness on the neck. That was the point of us putting it there to give ourselves a nice defined jawline. And see the whole time, you're not really seeing me do anything back and forth. It's just kind of the stippling, fast stippling motion. And you can see all that craziness that looked like I was crazy with the makeup is starting to come together ever so beautifully. Look at that. Looking in the mirror here. And like, did I need two pumps? No. Definitely, I didn't need two pumps. I always forget that the It Cosmetics Illumination CC Cream, which, by the way, is one of my favorite products for foundation, although they call it a CC cream. It's definitely a medium to full buildable. Not super full, but full, full-ish built. Definitely medium to full-ish built. Um, it's got a bit of a glow because they have the non-illuminated one, which is just the CC cream. I think they have now a matte one, but... And the illuminated one is my personal favorite. So keep stippling. I'm gonna speed this up for you guys a little bit so you don't get bored. And then of course, I'm gonna take a beauty blender and just kind of pat it all down. My beauty blender is not wet, it's dry. I very rarely use it wet. I prefer dry, I know that's crazy, but I do. So see guys, it looks so natural because the foundation is what you're seeing. The contour is kind of stepping in. You can see it there, you can see it there, you can see it sort of in here, um, but it's just kind of coming through the foundation and I always like to do this even if your brush like I said is perfect for contour and highlight I love taking a beauty blender and just kind of patting everything down I use quite a bit of pressure I never use I never rub back and forth it's always a padding motion and then at this point I go in with a brighter concealer because I do want to make this area a little bit brighter in here. So I'm going to use the Clay de Peau foundation, uh, concealer. I don't know what the number of this is because it's rubbed off, but I'm just going to put a tiny bit in there and in there. And I am going to also recontour my nose a tiny bit, guys. Um, I'm going to do it using the same Hoola cream. I try to do it ever so lightly.
Okay, there we go. And then I just like to sort of blend this by blending it upwards into the nose, trying to still leave that sort of light line in between. Let me see if I can get closer to you guys like that. And then I'll just pat it in with the Beauty Blender and use the same uh, light concealer under my eyes, just right in the middle there. So what I'll do is I'll use my Beauty Blender first to just pat this and make myself really nice and bright under the eyes, like this. And you could even leave this part, you guys know how I cook my concealer by leaving it on for about four minutes. You could do that as well. And then pat it in. But see, it just gives a little more brightness underneath the eyes. I'd rather go in with a bit more brightness than more contour everywhere. So just blend this downwards. Okay, and then blend in the concealer, the lighter part. So you've, my nose has got a bit of a contour. My nose is a bit wider down here. I don't always contour my nose. Um, I always wished I had a longer, slimmer nose, but you get what you get, and I like my nose, so a little contour makes it, helps it look more how I wish it would. And then, yep, yeah, just kind of patting everything in, Beauty Blender with a brush, just to make sure it's all nice and even before I go in with a little bit of bronzer to just exaggerate those parts that we contoured. So let me show you. I know at this point you can use like a Laura Mercier translucent powder or something to set it. I don't wanna really set it. I wanna leave my skin kind of to be dewy, but I am gonna take just a little bit of powder in certain areas. This is the Hourglass Ambient Luminous Light. These powders are fantastic because they do reflect light a little bit, so I really like it. Just slightly if I'm gonna use powder under the eye, love using this with the what is this the 165 mac brush it's such a nice brush i love this brush and just pat it in a tiny bit there we go and this one like i said reflects light a little bit i'm gonna do a little bit in my t-zone this is the only part i get really shiny and here i'm gonna mattify these areas a little bit where the folds are and a tiny bit at the chin and then I'm going to go in with my bronzer. This is a newer color from Hoola. This is their caramel. They launched it this year. I really, really like it. Um, it's definitely one where you're using a little bit of product and build it up because it can be really strong looking and like a very deep color, but it's a very true color to a tan. So you know when you go on the beach and you're on the beach and then you kind of have that like very intense tan at first as if you've like been on the beach for like seven days and it's got a bit of that reddish tone but it's very brown. I love, it's, it's a color like this, I love this. So I use this with a bigger brush because I don't want to have any sharp lines. I want everything to look light and diffused. If you want a more um, specific cut, if you want it to be more contoured, you can use a brush like this. This is the It Cosmetics Sculpting number 18 brush. Um, otherwise, I really like something softer. Again, taking a lot of this product off on my little towel that I use here and just my hand lightly building it. There we go. Very lightly building it in the same spots where we did the contour underneath the foundation. You guys, this is going, this color, I can't, I can't get enough. It's not for everybody. I think you have to be at least a medium skin tone to use this bronzer color, but it is so, so good. Notice I'm using my left hand. I'm, I'm right-handed, but I'm trying to get my left hand to do things that I'm much more comfortable doing with my right. I'm going to go right under the neckline, or right under the chin, and I'm going to bronze this is the lightest part of my neck right here where it dips, so I'm going to make sure to get that bronzed up. Like my hands are so light compared to my face, so make sure you bronze your, your hands if you do this. And a very little bit just on the nose part where I contoured and this kind of flicker out action really helps see this little chubbiness here i'm trying to pull that back so taking it sort of downwards and up like this just so it fans out and it's nice and mixed so you don't walk around on the street with crazy lines you know who you people are don't do that stop doing that with those crazy lines they don't look good 
Blend, blend, blend if you're not sure. Blend, blend, blend. Okay, beautiful. I feel like JLo just because I'm so tanned. And then let's go into highlighter. Hmm, what highlighter am I going to choose? Oh, let's do the Burberry. Oh, I love this highlighter. This is the Burberry Rose Gold Number no. 4 highlighter. Probably overpriced, yes, but it's a really nice color. We're going to do this. Usually I use a brush like this. Yeah, I'm going to do that today, actually. So I'm going to take a little bit and just pop it at the highest. Ooh. See that? Mwah. Highest part of my cheekbone. I'm going to do that here, too. And I like a little bit right in between. It's a funny spot in here, but I think it looks so good. Right in between my eyes because I don't mind this area looking bigger. If you're somebody who has a bit like a wider nose or a lot of space in here, you may want to skip that. But I don't, so I like to. And a little bit down the nose. Blend that out. I always take a little bit of this just on top of the brow bone there. And actually go right into the brow bone because I didn't put enough highlighter under my brow bone today and there and I do the little top of my lip right there so there's the highlighter and then I'll take the brush with a little tiny bit of the powder that whatever you use so if you use the loose one and just kind of tap into it just so everything blends it could be a naked brush too to be honest Go back into this. Perfect. Let me choose some lips and do complete this look for you guys. And that is the complete look. I threw on some lips and I fixed my brows a little bit and that is the complete look. I know that this started off looking super crazy, but you can see how beautiful it all blended in, how nice and natural the contour looks. And when I say natural, I mean natural for a more dramatic look. Um, this may not be everybody's day-to-day -day makeup. This is a makeup that would photograph well. This is a makeup that if blended, looks incredible in person as well. Uh, because usually I find makeups that look so good in pictures and on camera can look a little heavy in person. I, like if you saw me in person, I look like I'm wearing makeup, but it's not overly heavy. And on pictures and camera this would probably look just perfect as I think it looks pretty cool pretty good in the camera so I hope that you guys enjoy this look I so enjoyed filming this look for you if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up like it um, subscribe to my channel and when you like videos it lets me know that the content that I'm putting out there is stuff that you guys want to see in general what I do is uh, because I'm a working makeup artist and I work so much I try to sort of um, understand my clients needs I also teach makeup privately both one-on-one -on -one and in a small group setting um, and so I really understand from my clients what it is that they're craving to learn what it is that they're unsure of what it is that scares them and this is sort of the information I bring to YouTube but it also lets me know if I'm right or wrong when you guys like the video so I really appreciate that if you found this helpful maybe you can share it with your friend let them know link them below and um, it was such a pleasure spending a little bit of time with you guys. I always feel like I'm having these kind of girlfriend, boyfriend experiences when you're sitting here just talking, doing your makeup. So thank you so much for your time and for sharing this time with me. And uh, thank you for the bottom of my heart for being a subscriber if you are. And if you're not, please subscribe to my channel. I cannot wait to see you next week for another video of, I'm not sure what I'm filming yet. I have a couple ideas, but I will keep you guys posted. Have an incredible day today. Is Thanksgiving here in Canada. So happy Thanksgiving to my fellow Canadians and a w I wish you all a wonderful day. See you next week.